Yo, what's going on everybody? This is Brendan back again with another video and today we're going to be talking all about color grading red footage. This should be uh, really fun. So for any of you out there who are trying to learn more about color grading or color correcting um, or somebody who specifically wants to know how to color grade red footage, this video will hopefully help you out. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below and I'll be sure to help you guys out down there, but without further ado, let's get into it. So first of all, let's make the distinction between color correcting and color grading. Color correcting involves, well, what it's called, correcting the color of an image to balance it out, make sure your white balance is right and your contrast is where you want it to be and your exposure is where you want it to be and all that stuff. And then color grading is actually applying a look to the final image. So in this tutorial, I'll be going over the Lumetri Color tool in Adobe Premiere. And uh, this is a, super powerful color correcting and color grading tool uh, for people who just want to do it right in Premiere instead of having to go into another program such as DaVinci Resolve. So uh, let's get into it. First off, let's talk about color correcting a little bit. Well, even before we do that, let's get Lumetri Color in here. So if you go into your effects tools on the left here, depending on how your windows are set up, it might be different. But if you come in here and you type Lumetri Color, it'll pop up and just click and drag that over your uh, footage here and then it'll pop up in your effects controls uh, window on this side So as I said all of your basic color correcting uh, Stuff is going to be Involving your color temperature or your contrast and your exposure and all that stuff And that's going to happen all in this basic correction tab right here So if I drop this down, you'll see things like temperature tint exposure contrast highlights shadows exactly what I just described um, in order to see this in a slightly better format, you can actually come up here from your editing tab to the color tab, and that'll open up once it loads. That'll open up all of your color stuff for Lumetri Color in a whole separate window on the right here, which makes it a little bit more visual and a little bit more easy to see. So in terms of adjusting white balance, um, you can adjust it by either pulling this, which is gonna make it more blue or more orange, or you can pull to adjust the tint as well. So uh, basically the way, the way color theory works is you have uh, cool and warm on the x-axis and you have tint, green and magenta on the y-axis and you're kind of sort of try to find a middle ground between all those to get just the right color temperature. So uh, in terms of tint, I'm gonna leave this at zero and in terms of temperature, I'll, I'll put that back to zero too. If you have anything white in your image, or if you used a white card in the beginning of your shot, you can actually use your white balance selector here, so you can click the eyedropper, find something white in the image, click that, and that's going to fix your white balance. So that's the first thing I did, and as you can see, that did adjust the temperature a little bit cooler. So we'll leave that how it is there. Um, as you can see, this is a very flat look because I shot it on the red, and if I go over to my raw controls here, uh, you can see that we're viewing it in red gamma 2. We can also view it in a completely log format, or we can view it in something like a Rec. 709. I prefer uh, Red Gamma 2 or even Red Gamma 4 sometimes, which is a little bit more contrasty. Red Gamma 2 gives me a little bit more uh, range, though, to play around with and to see actually all the detail in the shadows and in the highlights a little bit better without it being too flat and too logarithmic. Cool, so that's what we're viewing it in is Red Gamma 2. So it is a pretty flat look. So I'm gonna to try to drop the shadows to make his beard and his hair um, actually appear almost pure black, not quite. So I'm gonna come over to my blacks here and drop them down until it starts to look nice. And if you want as well, if this helps you out, which I highly recommend, is if you come to Window and come down here to Lumetri Scopes. This is gonna open up another uh, window for you which I'm not sure, here we go. It took a while for it to load. Um, so the Lumetri Scopes tool is gonna help you, instead of just going off of your monitor to see exactly where all your values are, the Lumetri Scopes help you show exactly what IRE level all the values are at. So you can see that my highlights on the right side here, all this really bright stuff is right at about 90 IRE. So I could actually push that about 10 more. So I'll probably do that. Um, and it's showing that my blacks are almost at zero now. So if I keep dropping them, you'll see them come lower and lower. Um, actually, they start to clip right around here. So I'll leave them around there for there, for that, and we'll pull the whites up to just, so they're almost touching 100 IRE here. 
And when you see I've done that, it's, uh, it's basically raised the entire curve. So now I'm going to drop the blocks a little bit lower, just to about there, just so they start hitting the bottom of uh, the graph. So that's pretty good in terms of my contrast for now. I actually might push the contrast just on this setting a little bit, just until the middle values start going a little bit closer to the edges. So before, after, yeah. And this is all sort of by eye and also looking here. Uh, I'm going to pull the whites back a little bit because they're a little bit too close to clipping. And I'll pull the shadows back a little bit as well. So now everything is just pushed a little bit more to each extreme end to give me a little bit more contrast. So that looks really nice. My color temperature is set and my exposure and contrast look really good. I can show you a before and after here. That's before and that's after. My white balance looks a little bit nicer now as well. So now that my correction is done, I can get into the actual color grading process. Your creative tab gives you a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I'm not going to really talk about that today. That's more the tab that you'll use to apply a look, like a preset, basically. Um, I'm going to go into creating your own LUTs and your own presets in a future video. So if you want that, let me know in the comments, and I'll be sure to get on that right away. Uh, but anyway, we're, we're just going to skip that for this video. Uh, so the first color grading tool that you have at your disposal is the curves. You can either adjust the uh, the Luma curve, which is just basically, again, your contrast ratio uh, for everything, or you can adjust curves for all these different options that it gives you. Hue versus saturation, hue versus hue, hue versus Luma, and Luma versus saturation, and even saturation versus saturation. So it gives you a lot of adjustment just in the curves option. So for instance, um, if I wanted to, um, it's all about selecting a certain color and adjusting it to whatever color you want it to be or whatever value you want it to be, right? So for instance, if I wanted um, this blue suit to be more saturated, I could select the blues and select around the blues as well with these little markers and pull the saturation up and you'll see the blue on his suit gets super saturated. So that's just a really basic rundown of how that works. And for instance, like another option you'd have, again, we'll talk about the suit because that's like a very easy color to isolate here. Um, if I wanted to adjust the luma or the brightness of the suit, maybe I wanted the suit to be a little bit darker so I can select all the blue colors here and then just drop them down and you'll see his suit gets a lot darker. So that in and of itself is a very powerful tool to isolate certain colors and change them to your will. So that's pretty cool. Um, so that is the curves tool. Now we're going to go to the color wheels tool, which is the next one. Color wheels is all, all about adjusting the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights separate from one another. And you can adjust the color tint of them or the hue, um, and you can adjust the, adjust the intensity of them or the, the luma. So for instance, I can highlight or isolate just the midtones, and I can shift all the midtones purple if I wanted to. Next up, and this is the really, really powerful tool, the HSL or hue saturation luma tool. So what this basically allows you to do is literally with an eyedropper tool, you can select a very specific value based off its hue, saturation, and luma, and then you can adjust that value on its own. So for instance, if I wanted to adjust the color of the suit, I can eyedropper the suit, and that gives me an isolation on that particular point, its hue, its saturation, and its luma. Now, uh, it might not be gathering all of the points of color in that suit, it might be missing some of the brighter parts and some of the darker parts and some of the more saturated parts. So you can adjust that manually on your own. So uh, I can pull out, I can feather all of these and I can increase their range a little bit. And I'll basically do this until I find that most of the selection is covered. So I think I need to pull this out a little. Now I'm starting to get somewhere where all of the blues are being selected. And we'll even pull this out a little bit too. Cool, that's looking pretty good. I'll maybe even increase the range of that a little bit just so I get all of the blues. And now that I have my selection complete, you can see a before and after of what your selection is by hitting this box here. And it'll highlight where all of, basically all the pixels that are selected where they're at. So now that I know that's good, I can come down here and I can start adjusting those colors. So uh, let's increase the saturation of that a little bit because I do want it to be a bit more saturated. So now his suit is going to have a bit more saturation. And even some of the tealy blue colors in the background are going to be saturated a little bit more. 
And also maybe I'll shift all of those a little bit more towards the tealish green side instead of just the blue side. So that's starting to look really nice. Let me show you a before and after of that. There's before and here's after. A little bit more saturation, quite a bit more saturation actually. And everyth everything that's blue is now a little bit more teal. Okay, so now the next thing I wanna do is I want to isolate his skin tone here and make that look really nice. So I'm going to basically apply another Lumetri color effect. Click and drag that on. And now we're going to make another selection. So first I'll select somewhere around his cheeks here. And now we're gonna turn on what our selection is seeing. Cool. And then we'll adjust the selection and the hue, saturation, and luma until we get something that basically selects his entire face. That's starting to look nice already. Um, maybe I'll feather this out a bit more, pick up a little bit more of those reds. Good, perfect. So now basically his entire face is nicely selected. You can see it feathers out nicely into his beard and into his hair here. So we know we've got uh, a pretty good selection there. So I can undo uh, the selection that we see and now we're gonna come down and we're gonna adjust those colors. So first, right off the bat, I know I wanna increase the saturation quite a bit. I'm gonna increase it more than I need to so I can see the actual sort of value of it. It's very uh, greenish yellow right now. Okay, right there seems about right. And I'll drop the saturation just a little bit because it's a little bit too saturated. Right around 150 looks nice. And now we've got really good contrast between the skin tones and the blue of sort of the rest of the image. So that's looking really, really good there. I'm feeling really happy about that. Last but not least, if we wanted to mess with the vignette a little bit, we could. That's another cool little feature that the Lumetri Color Tool has. So if I pop this open, I'm going to drop the vignette down a little bit so I can start to see it. Um, I will increase the roundness so it's a little bit less wrappy. Feather it out a little bit and maybe increase the amount a little bit more. Let's look at the before and after. That's pretty nice. Maybe increase the roundness a little more, drop the amount. And that's just up to your personal taste. If you want it to feel a little bit darker, a little bit more dramatic, then you can start messing around with a vignette or you can do your own custom vignette. It doesn't have to be in the Lumetri Color Tool, but that's just to show you kind of um, you know, what its capabilities are. Now looking at this a little bit more, I feel like I want it to have a little bit more contrast. Yeah, maybe just a little bit more contrast. So I'm gonna go back into the basic color correction and we are going to basically just go to contrast and start pushing that. Um, you can do it this way with just increasing the contrast like that, or you can come to the curves and start adjusting the contrast from here. So, I'm gonna do that actually. Uh, basically, I'm looking at his beard and I want his beard to be a little bit darker. And as I do that, I'm feeling like his skin tones are looking a little bit dark. So let me bring up those scopes again. All right, so now that the scopes have loaded, um, we're gonna adjust the mid-tones here a little bit. And we're just gonna bring them a little higher without bringing the highlights up too much more. Let's look at a before and after of that. So now we have quite a bit more contrast in here. It's a lot punchier. And it also feels a little bit too, maybe a little bit too green to me um, in the tint. So I think I'm going to go back to basic correction and just add a little bit more magenta into this image. And Perhaps it's also a little bit too saturated overall, so now I'll drop the overall saturation a little, just a hair, from 100 to about 94. And that is starting to look really nice. I'm starting to really feel that. So uh, let's look at a complete before and after. So this is after, and here's before, and here's after again. So 
Uh, there's a little bit of a look at how to color correct and color grade red footage. You can see it's really easy. All right, so that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys learned a little bit more about color grading today. If you have any other questions, be sure to leave them in the comments and I'll totally answer as much as I can. So thanks for watching and I will catch you guys in the next one.